Hi, this is Justin from Sonic Scoop coming at you from Bronze Studios this time. Thanks to B&H, we are doing a tutorial series on guitar miking. And this time, we're going to go into depth on miking electric guitars. We're going to start off with some single mic techniques, close miking, and then we're going to look at ways to blend multi mics, both multiple close mics as well as close and distant mics. We're going to go through a whole array of approaches today. I hope you enjoy it. We've got a great guitarist with us, Sulian Vanderwalt. Let's dive right in and get started. So let's look at a few ways to mic an electric guitar amp. You really have two main strategies. You've got your close mics and your distant mics. And for either of those approaches, you can use a dynamic mic like this Shure SM57, probably one of the most popular mics in the history of the universe for miking uh, guitars. You can also look at ribbons and uh, condenser mics. Ribbons are going to give you a bit more of a, a full-bodied and smoother sound. We've got some Royer 121s here today, and those going to have a lot more bottom end than the Shure SM57, and a lot kind of a, of a throatier, more full-bodied mid-range. We're also going to try out some condenser mics on this amp, and you can get a bit more of a hi-fi tone that way, a bit more of a comprehensive picture of the amp. And you can also blend these approaches together. One of my favorite things to do is on a two-speaker amp to put a dynamic mic on one speaker and a condenser mic on the other speaker and kind of blend them together to taste. So the two approaches you can take when you're doing a close mic on an amp are to either A, kind of go on axis, meaning pointing directly at the cone of the amp. It can be a little tricky to find the cone uh, on these speakers sometimes, so it can be really handy to take a flashlight. And if you shine a flashlight right into the front of this grill, you'll usually be able to see an outline of the speaker. Now, going right on the cone will give you a lot of clarity, a lot of articulation. Uh, you almost get a kind of a papery top end out of it. Uh, but if you're looking for kind of maximum crunch and top end edge, that really can be the way to go. Uh, what's more popular for people looking for a fatter sound is to go more toward the side of the speaker, so we're a little more off axis. And you can go straight ahead, or some folks like to go more like a 45 degree angle, so you're pretty much parallel with the speaker cone that curves around. Um, sticking it right up against the grill is fine, and you can experiment with the sound going further back as well. But on a dynamic mic uh, like this one with a cardioid pattern, you might get a little bit more of kind of a bass lift when you're right on it as a fo opposed to further back. Like I said, one of my favorite things to do is to put a dynamic on one side and a condenser on the other, but some folks will blend together different types of dynamics. Say, a Shure SM57 along with a Sennheiser MD421 that has uh, kind of an even brighter tone. You can also blend this with something like a Royer 121. If you put a Royer 121 ribbon right up against this uh, speaker cone, you'll get a lot more bottom end, a lot more of a full bodied tone. And if you want the guitar to take up a lot of space in the mix, a Royer 121 might do you some good. But if you want something that's really classic and a little bit lean, an SM57, it's hard to beat. A lot of other mics like this, uh, uh, Audix i5 can do you well, uh, a Bear Dynamic M201, a uh, ton of great mics, but uh, always good to have one of these in the studio. What we're also going to be playing around with here are some slightly more distant mics. And when you're doing more distant mics, you have two approaches. You can go real distant and use it almost like a room mic that is going to act as an accent mic, filling in the tone from the closed mic. Or you can play some kind of like we have now, where you're maybe a foot to two feet away. And there you're just getting a natural sound of an amp in a room. And this kind of thing can work very well for uh, either a blues guitar tone or you know, a somewhat atmospheric guitar tone, something that you want to set you know, further back in the mix so that the guitar doesn't feel like it's sitting there right at the edge of the speaker in your mix, but rather sits back a little bit without you having to fuss around too much. The very last thing we have is a real room mic, and I figure if we're going to do a room mic, let's get it to sound as roomy as possible. So if you follow me back this way, we've got a Royer 121, and this is turned away from the amp. This is a bi-directional mic. It hears from the front and the back and not from the side. And we've got the side of this mic pointing right at the amp. This is called its null point. It really doesn't pick up anything from here. So what's happening is we're really just getting the reflections off the wall. So this room is going to end up sounding even bigger than it is with this Royer 121. What you can do to really maximize the sound of the space is if I put a gobo here between the mic and the amp, blocking out all the direct sound from the amp, then we'll really get a bit of uh, delay in just the ambience of the guitar tone. All right, so that's our setup. Let's hear a couple of these close mics, both 
on axis and off axis. Then we'll hear our middle distance mics, and then we'll hear this far out Royer room mic. Let's have a listen. Thanks for joining us for this installment in our three-part series on mic and guitars. Make sure you check out the other two parts. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, coming at you from Braun Studios, courtesy of B&H. Go to sonicscoop.com, check us out there for more videos. Go to bnh.com. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time.